Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I would like to thank my sponsor, uh, the Golden Jubilee Trust, for affording me the opportunity of the Nuffield experience to connect me to a network of innovative leaders from around the globe. I work for and live in the catchment area of Barry Road Co-op, West Cork. It's a scenic area where the predominant enterprise is dairy. So I set off around the world to see whether in fact there's a future for the traditional multi-purpose cooperative. So they say travel broadens the mind. We certainly had some adventures along the way, but I'll leave that for tonight because I'd hate to embarrass my fellow scholars. So is there a future for traditional co-ops given the globalization of milk marketing? In today's presentation, we will look at the concept of federation, of coming together in processing. We will compare the New Zealand and, da and Irish dairy industry during growth, and we will look at federations in action. Separately, we will look at the farm development agenda and making the farmer the best he can be. This is the manufacturing milk map of Ireland. There are 20 or more co-ops operating across the island. Being restricted by quotas since 1983, co-ops have chosen different pathways to growth, including non-milk activities. Kerry and Glanbia, with 50% of the milk supply, formed hybrid co-op PLCs and expanded internationally. The remaining co-ops operate a variety of activities, including milk processing and the provision of farm inputs. These co-ops have been wealth creators in communities that may not otherwise have thrived. In the West, Arriva, it also operates a marks business and now a biomass division, accepting wood pulp waste from local farmers, adding value. In Tipperary, Mulnahon are operating a national wholesale hardware business, including the national cattle tag system. In West Cork, we ourselves, having bought out a local butcher, uh, killing a few pigs per week, uh, and from a greenfield, greenfield site 15 years ago, we are now the third biggest pig processor on the island. Many other co-ops have their own <coughs> stories also. We need consolidation of the dairy industry for sure. The point is that a simple merging of co-ops without losing shareholder value and pride is just not that simple. So, how have smaller co-ops performed to date? How do we measure performance? What matters most for dairy farmers? Well, like Jim Wolfe said this morning, it's, it is, of course, milk price. Smaller co-ops have been doing well in an era where supply has been restricted and demand has been growing. I'm quite proud of the fact that our co-op has been at the top of the milk, KPMG Milk Price League consistently over the last number of years. We're the Manchester United of milk processors. So do we have any cause for concern? How in the future are we going to cope with all this extra milk? We have to spend money on capital and you know, the cash shortfalls to pay for the milk. When we look at ourselves in the mirror, are we really as awesome as we think? So, <laughs> these are the results of a survey we carried out in West Cork in 2012. As in other co-ops, our suppliers are looking forward to a new exciting era of growth denied to the generation of farmers. Growth of 40 or 50 percent over the next five years will bring new opportunities and new challenges to both farmer and to the co-op. New Zealand has seen all of this before. Now we'll look at New Zealand going through its rapid phase of growth during the early 90s. In 1983, New Zealand was producing 5 billion litres of milk, the same as Ireland today. Today, 31 years later, the, uh, New Zealand are producing, they've quadrupled their output. In the 1990s, Kiwi farmers went headlong into expansion, chasing opportunities, um, particularly in the South Island. Some farmers became very wealthy. Many 
others also went broke, losing everything. Supply chains came under pressure as low margin co-op businesses were struggling to invest in infrastructure to deal with and pay for all this extra milk. This forced consolidation in the dairy industry. 11 of 14 co-ops went out of existence during a five year period from 1996 to 2001 with Fonterra emerging as the dominant player with 97% of the milk. This has slipped back to 85% since. There was actually no grand plan for this. The point is, the Irish dairy industry will look dramatically different in 2020. Co-op boards should now take the opportunity to act from a position of strength. But I feel that events will overtake some co-op boards more quickly than they may realize. Already three co-ops have gone out of business in the last four years. As I see it, we are a mirror image of New Zealand. We can do nothing and face the inevitable, with the little naive fish unsuspecting being gobbled up by the shark. Or we can come together in a planned and practical way through federation. The model is not new, nor indeed is it guaranteed to be successful, but that's the same as any other business model. What is a, uh, a federation? It's when two or more independent co-ops come together to set up, uh, uh, to perform some of their existing functions or else completely new functions. Bit of a mouthful. It conforms perfectly to the, the sixth and most basic principle of cooperation. When cooperatives serve their members most effectively but, and strengthen the cooperative movement by working together. You may be surprised to learn that Rabobank one of the biggest and safest banks in the world is in fact a federation of local credit unions in Holland. <coughs> Finland, or Valio in Finland, is a federation of 18 member co-ops in Finland processing 85% of its milk supply and delivering on milk price like no other co-op in the world. Carberry in West Cork is a federation of four local cooperatives who've merged their milk processing. Each of the four operate independently otherwise, building shareholder value in their own communities. They have a chance to be part of a growing international daring business, which would be impossible if they were acting alone. And it's not doing so bad on milk price either. So, have we a plan? Or are we operating to the Spike Milligan philosophy that if you have no plan, nothing can go wrong? Can we learn from the successes and failures of others? Perhaps we would do well to consider the Valio model. Valio in Finland is a prime example of a national federated processor that actually works. In the 1990s, the industry in Finland was going through a period of very strong structural change as they were preparing to enter the EC as it was at the time. In 1992, the industry established a one company model under the ownership of the industry to look to establish uh, combined marketing and manufacturing. Two years later, Valio Limited gave members three options by which they could confer their mutual cooperation. Alternative A, they could merge their manufacturing into Valio, much like the West Cork co-ops did in Carberry. B, they could hire their manufacturing functions to Valio, and C, they could enter into a marketing agreement with Valio, the same as Irish co-ops do with the Irish Dairy Board. The focus of the new company became on innovation, delivering on milk price, and the bottom line is that it was a success. So moving on to the farm development agenda. Traveling to New Zealand, Finland, and Brazil, really opened my eyes to the focus co-ops like ourselves must put on membership, member development. While the scale of farming in New Zealand is impressive, it also has some unsustainable environmental practices and unenviable levels of debt. From what I could see, there were only two types of farm in New Zealand, the one for sale and the one that will be for sale. Debt profile on some farms has increased dramatically in the last 10 years, and making interest payments is considered normal. 
I'm not sure what they're going to do this year when prices slip to $5. This is not the path we want to lead our farmers. On the other hand, and probably because of debt, as one farmer said, it gets you up in the morning. Um, the they, they have good focus on benchmarking, financial budgeting, and as we heard uh, through the day, mentoring. Mentoring is considered a very strong trait there. Um, and also systems like uh, the share farming and contract rearing are highly applicable in an Irish context. My next port of call was Finland. I found fin uh, the team at Valio to be very proactive, working with their suppliers with the ethos of making them the best that they can be. There is a joined up process between the farmer, the co-op, the bank, and uh, who's the, the advisory service. They come together to form um, their expansion plan in, uh, so that it's a sustainable plan for the farmer. Educational visits by the Valio team with new entrants to other countries to research the best system, si systems is considered good business. In July, I landed in Brazil. Came home with a broken leg, but that's another story. Um, evidence of how far ahead they were in serial technology was, was at every turn. This was due to co-op input, co-ops like Comigo and GM technology. Uh, meeting, but in contrast, it, it was extraordinary to see how far behind they were in dairying. Meeting with the managers of Comigo, they were showing us how they were setting out to buck this trend. And um, working with one farmer, they showed us that they were hoping to quadruple his output over four years by the implementation of um, best practice. The, uh, the overall lesson from all countries visited is that co-ops must take a proactive, hands-on role when it comes to knowledge transfer to affect real change at farm level. So, how good are we as farmers? As we enter into a new exciting era, we are lucky to have world-class researchers in Chagas Moor Park. However, however, they say, what you can't measure, you can't manage. And it is disappointing to note that only 1,300 of 18,000 dairy farmers are actually doing profit monitors. And less than this again are actually doing grassland budgeting. So where is the vacuum? Why is the knowledge not percolating down to the ordinary farmer? The top 10% will always implement the latest innovations, but the rest will need more help. Chagask itself has only 230 advisors across all disciplines and do not have the resources for a new era. The fact is, co-ops with a vested interest will need to fill the void and take responsibility within their own catchments. I also believe that information technology and measurable key performance indicators will drive the future farm development agenda. But real connection is needed by co-op managers to make this happen. So before you leave today, I would like you to remember what a good co-op should look like. Like Jim Wolfe said today, we have a moral contract to do what is right in the community. And I also believe that sustainable community can coexist with profit. The co-op here depends on its members, and the members depend on it. A co-op's goal should always be to create or preserve the maximum amount of economic activity in its area. The benefits are a strong, vibrant community with full employment and hopefully a good GA and rugby team. Finally, to conclude, the industry will look radically different in five years from now. Either way, I firmly believe that farmers need to be in control of it. Smaller co-ops, already part of a federation, have been proven to be stronger. Co-ops must lead mindset change by taking a proactive a pro role in knowledge transfer, treating it as a contact sport to affect real change. My recommendations. Strong leadership is needed from government to drive and bring the industry together, but it must be attractive to the participants. The template is already proven. On the farm development, the co-op industry with, with, a vested inter, in, with a vested interest must fill the void that exists by having their own development teams and implement some simple, profitable farm systems. 
and I'll also finish with a quote. So what are our choices? We can do nothing and wait for the inevitable. Or we can grow more together, grow more grass, grow more on cooperation in processing. If not, we may well be left to heed the words of Benjamin Franklin when he said, we must indeed all hang together, or most assuredly, we will all hang separately. Thank you very much. And thank you to my wife. <laughs> <laughs>